powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Kent Lutzen. Two separate winter weather advisories are in effect this weekend. One for northwest Montana, including the Flathead and Mission Valleys, and the other for the Missoula and Bitterroot Valleys, as well as the surrounding mountains. Meteorologist Russ Thomas joins us now from the Meteor Storm Tracker Weather Center. Russ? Yes, yeah, sorry, Kent, thank you. And what we're going to do really this time around to focus on that one in the northwest, and that's only because it is actually ongoing right now. It's through 5 p.m. tomorrow. The other one starts uh, tomorrow around 5 p.m. So again, focusing on northwest Montana, Flathead Mission Valley, about two to five inches of snow now that is in the valley that is was expected by 5 p.m. tomorrow and again what we're going to see is uh, there's no chances or snow uh, heavy the, the rate of snow pickup is moving the overnight hours and tomorrow and again with that in mind roads a little slick out there for sure satellite and radar and you can see snow continue to work its way through western Montana we're seeing more of a shift or impact northwest at least over the next several hours and I'll have more coming up. Thanks, Russ. The snow and ice-covered roadways caused dozens upon dozens of crashes, rollovers, and slide-offs across the state today. According to the Montana Highway Patrol, as temperatures drop and snow continues to fall, the roads become increasingly dangerous. MHP said there are simple ways that you can stay safe while driving in these hazardous conditions. One thing to keep in mind is to avoid cruise control. MHP, MHP says cruise control is only meant to be used on a bright sunny day with optimal road conditions. Other tips include slowing down if drivers are not comfortable with road conditions and make sure that you have blankets and warm clothes as well as other supplies in your vehicle. Switching gears to sports, the University of Montana Grizzlies took on the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks this, Lumberjacks this afternoon and gave fans a pretty exciting game. Eric Clemens joins us live with more on the big game. Eric? Yeah, that's right, Kent. The Montana Grizzlies they really needed this win to hold on to their postseason hopes. And they went into the bout with the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks without quarterback Gresh Jensen. Jensen still recovering after taking a huge hit last week. But the Grizzlies prevailed against this tough foe. A first quarter ejection of Lumberjack quarterback Case Cookus lights a fire under the Grizzlies. But that heat doesn't give way to a clear advantage. The score stayed neck and neck throughout much of the game. But the Grizzlies came out on top. I'll tell you how later tonight in sports. Kent. Thanks, Eric. Washington Grizzlies Station Stadium was packed with parents earlier this evening for UM Family Weekend. At today's game, there was a tailgate and seating area just for families. Parents say it gave them a unique opportunity to spend time with their students. One married couple started dating after they met in UM Marching Band, and now their daughter is a section leader for the same band. band. She's a clarinet section leader, and my husband and I met in marching band here at UM, so it's yeah. a long tradition. Tell people I played trumpet, he played crash cymbals, love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow the events continue and families have the opportunity to hike the M with the UM President Sheila Stearns. A suspect is dead after a nine hour standoff with Billings Police at a sporting goods store. Despite volleys of gunfire throughout the morning, no officers were injured. KTVQ's Dustin Clement has more. A suspect drove a vehicle into the front of Big Bear Sports Center early Saturday morning. The suspect fired shots inside the store, and when police arrived, officers fired their weapons. We had random, intermittent gunshots from inside the store. They were of all caliber. Uh, small and large, we could tell from the sound. The man barricaded himself inside the sporting goods store and police called it SWAT team, as well as the negotiator on scene. More gunfire, flashbangs, and negotiations went on for nine hours. At one point we thought that we, he was going to give, uh, give himself up. He exited or started to exit from the east door next to, uh, next to PetSmart. Uh, he showed his hands initially retreated into the building and then the next thing we saw was a rifle barrel that was that was uh, pointed in the direction of officers. An officer fired at the suspect driving him back into the store. Police continued to negotiate and 30 minutes later the suspect went back to the front door and then fired at officers. Police received visual confirmation of the suspect through security cameras inside the store. We saw that uh, that he was not moving and so after 30 minutes we sent our robot in to, uh, to double check. Previously, he had uh, you know, feigned that he was going to give up, so we didn't want to put anybody at risk. The robot went in, took an assessment, and then we, uh, we sent our tactical team in with the sheriff's office to, to verify that, uh, that the individual was indeed down and then clear the rest of the store. And now the investigation begins.
We have a, you know, a crime scene here that we're going to deal with. So our detectives are going to be working through the entire store. I have no idea uh, what our suspect did while he was in the store. Don't know what damage, if any. Um, you know, obviously he had access to weapons and he used them, so um, he may have spent some time back in the gun section. You know, these are all things that are going to come out in the investigation. Police used city dump trucks to provide protection from possible stray bullets entering the busy King Avenue. Former Governor Judy Martz, who passed away on October 30th, was honored today in her hometown of Butte. KXLF's John Amy was at the event where people reflected on the life and legacy of this pioneering Montanan. From an Olympian to a trailblazing political leader, the life and legacy of Judy Martz is as expansive and diverse as the terrain of the state she once governed. Uh, her legacy is much probably too complicated for me to, to get my arms around, but I just feel very blessed that I knew her. The Butte Civic Center was packed Saturday with people who knew and admired the woman who served as governor from 2001 to 2005. This Republican from Butte was known for her ability to connect with people. Democrats and Republicans could actually work together to try to accomplish some good things, and Governor Martz uh, always tried to do that, and it, it made her a special person. As a pioneer of Montana politics, Martz was an inspiration. As uh, someone who has three daughters and uh, uh, three granddaughters, uh, I think uh, the fact that she broke that glass ceiling in terms of being our first woman governor is incredibly important. Uh, but uh, she was a force to be reckoned with at every walk of life. She got up every single day with an impenetrable optimism, a smile that melted hearts, and a deep commitment to serving every Montanan. Even if you never believed in Judy Martz, Judy Martz always, always believed in you. The hundreds of people who packed into the Butte Civic Center learned about the numerous accomplishments of Judy Martz. But probably her greatest accomplishment was how much she cared for the people she met. What I miss is uh, how deeply she cared for people. She, you know what? She governed from the heart. That's how deeply she cared for people. Some say it was her strong spiritual faith that helped her accomplish many great things. Her son-in-law said people can learn from her example. Do Judy's best. As her best, let us stay represented her nation and changed people's lives. So if you get the opportunity, do her best. A farewell to a trailblazer in Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Martz, was, who died after a long battle with pancreatic cancer, was just 74 years old. Coming up after the break, meteorologist Russ Thomas will be back with a look at tomorrow's weather. Plus, he will break down the two winter weather advisories in effect this weekend.